But eventually, when they then wanted to get really serious and get married, they had to leave. Um, they were also listed because they were once imprisoned for a weekend in Kimberley. Mm -hmm. um, there was a roadblock, and the police officer stopped them and said, You are a couple. And he put them into jail from Friday night to Monday morning. And then on Monday morning, there was a court hearing, mm -hmm. and they had no evidence that they were a couple, but they, they monitored them. Okay. And they then decided, look, we want to get married, we want to have children. And they tried to get married. They went to um, Swaziland, I don't know, I think they even went to Mozambique, I speak under correction now. But they asked various priests if they would marry them and they said, we can't and um, it's actually illegal and you should better mm. go. Mm. So then at that time, my mother had an ID, but not a passport, so she had to apply for a passport and eventually she left. And when I say against all odds, then I mean political pressures, but also against her own family, because they were also not so fond of the fact that mm. she was dating and then later on marrying a foreign national from, mm. from Germany, going so far away from her home, so they predicted horrible things would happen to my mom. Mm. And yeah, so besides authenticity, perseverance, feistiness, just believing in your dreams, just pushing through um, uh, trust. I also learned a lot of trust from her. Mm -hmm. She instilled this absolute strong trust in us. Mm -hmm. And she also raised us, my sister and myself, to speak up and to not fit in. Um, and yeah, these are the traits I learned from her. But it wasn't easy in the beginning because um, <laughs> We, we stuck out there like a sore thumb as a family and everybody, oh Africa, oh you know, this is now the early 60s in Germany, mm. people weren't that worldly at the time, you mm. know, and, and uh, my mother was really the only person of colour, but then there were also at that point in time were foreigners, not, not from other European countries, I think there was one guy from Italy mm. and um, they were interviewed, my mom and him, and actually the local newspaper, they produced a story where she's on the page standing in the snow, first time in her life in snow, and, and yeah, so um, I guess um, the variety of diversity and what it brings to you, the beauty that it brings to you, the stories that she brought to our house mm. when she spoke to us about South Africa, even my friends at school, they would come sit on our couch in the living room and listen to my mom's stories, mm. um, yeah, actually amazing. So yes. I, le I learned a lot from her. I'm very grateful for being her child. Mm -hmm. And um, that was certainly never a dull moment, never mm -hmm. a boring life. But both my parents were very worldly, mm -hmm. also my father. Mm -hmm. It was a reason why he left Germany to come to South Africa. So they, they were cool people. Good, sounds like it, definitely. Mm -hmm. So then we, let's fast forward a little bit mm -hmm. into uh, your early career. Mm -hmm. um, so here you are, a young woman. Mm -hmm. um, Not anymore at the time. Well, well, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, a young woman starting life in corporate Germany. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, clearly, <laughs> an environment which uh, certainly at the time mm -hmm. um, institutionally was designed, which, yeah, was designed to support and advance and promote uh, I guess the antithesis of what you appear to be on the surface. Mm -hmm. In other words, you were not a young white male um, in that environment. Uh, you were female, you were a person of colour, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and I say on the surface because mm -hmm. of course what underlies that is, mm -hmm. is your drive and your ambition and your, and mm -hmm. your ability to do yeah. what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly on the you know in terms of the perception mm -hmm. of, of who you were coming into mm -hmm. that environment um, I guess someone at the glance would not have tagged you as someone who was going to do particularly well given the circumstance at the time mm -hmm. um, and so within that context clearly there would have been challenges that you encountered in that, within the realm of how included or un Mm -hmm. not included you were, um, how diverse or non-diverse the environments mm -hmm. were and uh, I, I suppose unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, in many ways many corporate environments have not changed that much no, over the last 20 to 30 years but 
um, what I want to touch on first is, is just a little bit of what your experience was like in those early years, starting off uh, in your career in those environments and the kind of challenges that you that you faced.